Okay, I think I'm recording now. Uh, okay, so this is uh, question 34 and 35. On which midterm? The 2014 midterm. So I'm basically going over the question which most people have a problem. So uh, this is a standard curve problem. The, the first one seems to uh, most people is okay. So you have the curve, then the end known, which is 0 0.77, which is around here. 0.7577 and then goes down and the solution is probably 6 I guess 6 or 8 uh, well but you had the you had the formula here uh, actually based on the, the curve I'm showing now I'm not sure whether it's a 6 or 8 but you had the you had the equation here you can just put uh, unknown sample yeah, you had a point y should be 0.77 in that case, and then you can solve the x. Right. So you had the equation here, so 0.7 equals to 0 0.035 something x plus 0.57. And then you just found out that the x is it's either 6 or 8 probably. Uh, Okay, and then uh, we have the second question. Uh, based on the standard curve, again, based on this standard curve, the concentration of protein sample now is 600 microgram per mil. Uh, if the, we dilute this sample by 500 fold and then measure the absorbance, the absorbance would be... So this is uh, apparently, uh, if, if we don't, just tell you the question straightforward, maybe you won't have a problem. If I <laughs> add the extra step to a 500 fold dilution, that would seem to throw a lot of people off. So, well, again, you still have to go back to, that's all we need. We have this equation here. Now the problem now is, is the, uh, we have the x. x is not, uh, 600 microgram per mil. It's, it's 600 per mil divided by 500. That's the mm. x. Right? We did a 500 fold dilution. So this is what x. And all you need to do is just plug this number there. Then you will find out the y. Oh. Right. So you 600, you, then you dilute this number by 100 fold, and then I found out what the y is. So there, that's the y. That's the one question. Uh, next question is 32. Uh, this is basically uh, uh, a question people always have problem, but you need to practice. Uh, so this question says the location of this enzyme cut PMSH2, PMSH2 plasmid is, is the plasmid we're using in this class. It cut at the three places, 5,000, probably 500, and uh, around 2,000. Cut three places, and then we run a gel. Which one should it look, how this gel going to look like? Right, so you have to remember when you cut a piece of DNA, is that a circular or linear? And this is a circular. So we cut it uh, three times, one time, two times, three times, and uh, how many fragments <coughs> are we going to see? Three. Now we should see, we go three fragments, I'm going to use. Right. So, we're going to have uh, one fragment here, one fragment here, uh, a large fragment there. Uh, you just need to f figure out uh, the size of those fragments. Uh, let me find out the uh, switch color back. Maybe blue. Uh, what's the fragment here? You have about five point oh. So this is this fragment will be <coughs> five zero five seven minus uh. That's forty five hundred. Forty five. Sorry. Uh, so this one we have about well point five five. Right. So. And then, so we should see a fragment 0.557. Uh, 
and you go back to the right, look at the gel. And this is 500 base pair. This thing, so th this one, not to look like a 557. There's another one. Okay, so now we have the. So we know length three and four cannot be right because they don't have this band. So we can we have to pick from one two one five, and then we look at this band. This this band. This band will be. 4,500 and 1297 which is 3042 uh, so this is about 2.4 <coughs> kb we look at the gel 2 uh, 2 kb 3 kb oh this one 2.4 approximately 2.4 but we know this one is already out, this one out. So this one is here. So uh, this one doesn't. Well, this one is 2000. So I guess in theory you can. But that doesn't look like 2.4. 2.4 should be close to 2, not close to 3. This is questionable. But if you still want to go on, let's analyze this band. See whether we can see it. So, well, we know the entire size is 9.3 kb. We have a 2.4 kb and 0.6 kb, so that that band will be 9.3 minus 2.4 minus 0.55. What's the size? That this is about three. So that's about uh, minus this minus this 2.95. That's three. That's about 6.3. So this blue piece should about 6.3 kb. So we'll go back here, 6 KB, 7 KB. Uh, we have about between 6 and 7 here. This one is not. So number 5 definitely is out. Right? So that, that means only number 2 is correct. It's basically uh, you have to, I mean, a process by elimination. If you can't match the correct one, right, then you can pick the correct one directly. If you know that you just eliminate the wrong one. So Okay, that's one question. Here's another question. Uh, surprisingly, <laughs> this is the most uh, difficult question. <laughs> it, it turns out, uh, it, it, my, my guess is probably this, this incorrect, uh, again, trip to a lot of people. Uh, it seems to be this is always the problem. If we give you a choice, say which one is the wrong one, which is the incorrect one, that's always to uh, make it a little more challenging than it otherwise uh, would be. So you just have to pick the wrong statement. So, and this one, basically mismatch repair occurred during DNA replication. No, that's not right because after replicate, it's then it repair. So this one, but since it's incorrect, you, you, if I'm not sure, I'm going to put a question mark there and double check. Mismatch repair due with a slippage during the uh, uh, during the uh, replication during. Oh, I guess this is a wrong word. Deal with a slippage. That is is kind of correct. It's during that slippage after it's complete. I see this question does have a problem here. Uh, mismatch repair deals with the slippage occurred during the error. Uh, yeah, this is, this is an ambiguous uh, statement. I see that's the main problem now. Yeah. No, this one is is correct. Yes, because mismatch repair does deal with that slippage occurred. You just do it after the replication completed. But it, it doesn't happen during replication. No, this doing the replication is modified of the slippage, not the mismatch repair. So, so I guess this is some student may be uh, unclear, but doing the replication is 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 modification for the slippage, not the mismatch repair. So that's my understanding. So this uh, is a correct statement. Mismatch repair due to a small deletion, then that is also correct. Right. Mismatch repair due to it. So, well, I basically the best choice you have is A. So. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry.
But, but if you have question, it's probably done. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, P, uh, this is also one of the most difficult questions. PMSH2 plus may have three replication origin, F1, CO1, and ARSH4, oh and yeah. three open reading frame, MSH2, ampicillin, and here three. After we transform E strain oxotrophic for histidine, oxotrophic uh, for histidine means it's histidine cannot uh, synthesize histidine on its own, so that's what the oxotrophic definition is. A uh, research scientist played the yeast on medium without histidine. However, no yeast colony appear after three days. Which of the following scenario could explain the outcome? So basically, the yeast yeast cell is histidine minus. Oh, histidine minus, and we have the plasmid PMSH two trans, which have the his three marker there, we transform to yeast, we want to select for this. After we transform yeast cell, the cell should grow. The cell should grow, but we do not see anything. So, well, which answer should we select? Uh, again, we can do it uh, by elimination of the wrong one. So you have the yeast with the inability to synthesize the, the histidine, and then you have the PMSH2 with the histidine inserted into that yeast Yeah, so we should see, we should see colony, but we don't now see the, what's the possible reason. And the first one says oxotrophic cannot grow without histidine. That's uh, the correct statement, but that doesn't explain why we do not see, because this time we are transferring the plasmid into it. So the statement is correct, but it's not a reason to explain the observation. So uh, this, the first one is out. <coughs> the plasmid <coughs> has been degraded. So basically no plasmid has been transformed. That is possible reason, but I'm going to leave it for now, see whether the other two is wrong. The third one say the plasmid doesn't encode the enzyme required for histidine biosynthesis. Uh, that could be the reason ex except that the plasmid we have does have a HIS3, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's contradict with the HIS3, the statement that you gave, so it doesn't look like a, a correct a statement. The medium was mislabeled and it actually contained histidine. No, if that's the case, every cell should grow. So this definitely is now. This one is, is doesn't look right because it's contradict with the information we get. So B is basically your our best uh, choice. So can you say that again for the explanation as to why this seems like it's not right? But you said if it if that was true, then all of the cells would. No, this one. If the last one. If the media already contain histidine, all the cells should grow. Okay. We should see a lot of cell growth. I see, but you yeah. don't, and that's because the plasma is decayed. Right, yeah. So the, the number two is the best uh, choice here, the most possible uh, one. Yeah. 28. Oh, this again is 28. Sorry, I copied this one twice. Uh, Again, 28. Why am I doing this? Uh, 27. Okay. Uh, 27. The plasmid again has three replication origins, three open reading frames. Which of the following statement is, oh, I see, is incorrect. Yeah. I, I guess we really like the <laughs> double negative. See, <laughs> incorrect. Make sure you, again, you have to pick the wrong statement. Well, this can be replicated in E. coli. That's correct because we purify it from E. coli, mini prep. So this one is correct. If it's correct, then it's the wrong choice for the question. So we, we have to eliminate it. Right? PN2 can be replicated in yeast. That's also correct. That's why we do the transformation U to study the function. So this is also. Can we see that from the replication origin though? Which one would correspond to yeast? 
That's okay. great. Okay. Encode the unmatched to protein. It should. First, this one, of course, it also has a. It's called PM natural two for a reason. We does have the encoding there. So it seems to be the last one should be. I uh, see E. coli host cell contain PM natural two and crow. Oh what no, the host cell doesn't have that. This is the plasmid. E. coli host the cell contain PM natural two and crow in the. Brain. So so that's the last one. So the host cell doesn't contain. It contains the plasmid. So the plasmid is transforming in the E. coli, the host cell. Usually the host cell... Because E. coli is the host cell, so it has the MS, it has the plasmid in it. Yeah. Right. So it would be in the host cell, so it has the MS, it has the plasmid with the MSH2 insert. Right? No, the P. actually is a plasmid. The E. coli cell doesn't have the, uh, the MSH2, so its genome doesn't have this. MSH2 is the yeast gene, E. coli doesn't have it. MSH2, uh, so basically, you, you look at the... the I just thought that we inserted the PMSH2 into the E. coli for replication. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Y